I'm a Métis uh, woman from northern Saskatchewan, Isle of Cross, and I'm also a cancer survivor, five year in remission this, this year. And when I was struggling and going through my journey at the cancer centre, I saw the, the challenges my people were facing. And like, for example, the uh, language barrier, culture shock, when I saw old ladies crying because they didn't know which department to go and and I worked, I was at that time working for Saskatoon Health Region and I didn't even know where some other departments were, like for example, phlebotomy. So when I saw all the, the things that were happening, I thought I have to do something. The Creator gave me a second chance at life. I must make a difference. I have to be a voice for my people. That's a good question. I, I've, in my case, and I'm sure it's different with different researchers, but I involve patients in my research pretty much at different stages, but not always the same set of patients. Um, so if I can pick maybe an example, um, some of the work I'm doing right now is with uh, patient navigation in uh, Indigenous communities and Indigenous patients with cancer. And that all started several years back when I did some interviews with Indigenous cancer patients and I was trying to understand their, the, the way they made decisions uh, that might be different than, than Caucasians uh, or settler uh, communities. And in the process of doing those interviews, the, one of the things that came out was a, uh, a need for some navigation through the system. And it wasn't what I was expecting. Um, I had these really in-depth conversations with these uh, cancer patients, often like two, three hour long conversations. And they shared all kinds of things with me. But one of the things that stood out consistently was this need for patient navigation. Uh, so I, I heard about the, the Indigenous Family Advisory. So. I was invited to go and I attended and that was my first one so I just sat there and I listened. As I was sitting there listening, to, hearing what Dr. Groot and his team were saying, it's the same mandate that I wanted to accomplish. That's what I want to do. So when we were done the meeting, I talked to Dr. Groot and his team and, and I said, you know, I want to be part of what you're doing because this is a, there is a need. the kind of questions we wanted to ask people who were going to follow over the course of their cancer care journey, um, it was patients we turned to to say, How's, what are the right questions we should ask and how are we going to ask those questions? And when I first sat, I came up with the idea of applying for a grant to, to do this work, I had a, an elder on my, on my team who's also a patient, uh, had breast cancer herself, and, and this elder, I came up with this, I was sharing with my team this exciting idea of how we were going to do this grant and how it was going to be shaped and everything. And she listened and at the end very politely said, no, nope, that's not going to work. If you want to make this successful, you have to do it this way. It has to approach a lot more what an elder would do in the community. So we reshaped our, our proposal completely based on, on her recommendations. And So I can, I can honestly say that I wouldn't be doing any of the work I'm doing if it wasn't for the patients on my, on my team. Thank you.